Now before the internet, apps used to run on computers and to move them from one computer to another you had to essentially have some sort of um, transfer medium such as a floppy disk or a hard disk or some sort of some sort of mechanism to move things from one computer to another. With the advent of the internet though, we were able to transfer applications and data and information via the internet, which made things a lot easier. Now, as a result of that, the World Wide Web was developed, web pages, essentially. And that allowed us now to present information and to do things in a more convenient way but it required its own programming language. And that's called um, Hypertext Markup Language, HTML. So all web pages are written in a programming language called HTML. Now they often also have some additional languages if the website can do more complex things um, like cascading style sheets, which are called CSS, which allow you to format the pages uh, more nicely. And then if the pages are doing some sort of interactivity, like buttons where you can press and have things happen or animations, then we might have another programming language, a web-based programming language, such as JavaScript or other languages that allow that functionality. But in primary school, we focus on um, HTML and students learning how to code um, in HTML so that they can have their web pages do various things. Now, for that to occur, you need to teach your students about how the internet works. Now, at a basic level, don't have to go into incredible detail, but it will seem quite complex when you first come across it. The idea of a web address and unpacking how that web address is formatted and structured is something that your students will need to learn. How that web address is used to transmit information and to request information across the internet is something you will need to teach your students how to, learn, to use and understand. And if you don't understand that yourself, there'll be some learning you need to go through to be able to do that. It's not particularly complex, but if it's unfamiliar, it will seem complex. Now, I provided you a number of basic videos to help you uh, with that if you're uncertain about how the basics of the internet work. But once you understand that, then you can understand how HTML works where essentially we're sending instructions over the internet to display text or to display images. Now, well, actually that's incorrect. What we do is we send requests over the internet for text and images to come back to our computer to then display on our screens. Now for that to happen, we have to send information, well, we have to know where that information is. It's sitting on another computer somewhere specifically on a special specific computer. So your web address is actually that address to that particular computer somewhere in the world, which is going to be able to then send the information back to you. But in order for that to happen, you also have to send the information of your computer's address so that when, it, when that computer goes to send the information back, it knows how and where to send it to. And that's what we call packets of information. And they're sent over the internet and go backwards and forwards, um, transferring information. But understanding that is a fundamental computational thinking concept that allows your students then to be able to do things on the internet in terms of creating solutions to problems. Now, one solution to problem may be creating a web page. If they've got to um, let all 500 students in the school know about a party. They could print off 500 flyers and hand them out one to each student, or they could create a web page and have every student come to that web page and receive the information. Or they might send it out by emails, another internet based technology. So there are a range of different solutions to that problem, but they need to understand how the internet works in order to fully ex express that solution. Okay, so once we understand that web pages are made up of a programming language called HTML, we also have programming environments that allow us to edit and create those web pages. And I've given you a number of those that you can explore and have a look at. And a little five minute tutorial to work through that will um, ensure that you know the basics 
of how the internet works. Now, once we go beyond that, then we get into the idea of servers. Now, this is where we can have set up our computer so that it can receive requests for information and send that back to whoever's requesting it. Now, any computer can request information and receive it back if it's connected to the internet, but to actually have it being um, purposely set up to transfer information, we call that a server, and that runs on our computer. Any computer can run it. In fact, there's even servers that you can run through your browser and just sort of set it up and have it so that then anyone else can um, ask for files on your computer and your computer will send them to them. Now, that can be complex in schools. Of course, we often set up security protocols in schools to restrict um, access. But you can set up your own little server networks um, just with a few computers within a school. So it's not necessarily connected to the Internet. And students can learn about how servers work with those computers. Other, uh, other schools um, set up their own Minecraft servers, for example, so that students can connect their computers up to the, the computer running the Minecraft server and they can all play in the same Minecraft environment. So this is reasonably complex, but you would have students in your class, particularly in the upper years, that are more than capable of doing this and probably are doing it already, particularly if they're into computer gaming. Now, there are some other ways of doing it, such as not necessarily hosting it on your own computer, but using a hosting service. This is another computer somewhere where essentially you rent um, the use of it and it runs, um, so you can put information on it and people can request the information and send it backwards and forwards without it actually having to be on your own computer. And that's called a hosting service. And then finally, there's also internet simulators. And I provided you with a nice, easy internet simulator that you can set up and use with your students that mimics these processes, doesn't actually send any information out across the internet, but students can learn about the processes by using the simulator. So have a look at those examples and see what would be involved in students programming their own HTML solutions, creating their own websites and so forth. And I've given you one AI-based prompt which generates a, the HTML for a website. And so you can explore that and consider how you may use HTML and web-based programming with your students.